Hey, my name is Joey. I'm the instructor at Crowdman XD or an instructor at Crowdman XD. We are not at the school. We're in one of my, my home office. And today I want to talk about a case study of a one of our self-defense students, not at our school, that actually survived a violent attack from an attacker in her dorm room. And it's not the way you think she survived. It's actually, uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but really quick, just before I forget, if you do want to try out a class, just go to krovclass.com. Check it out. I think you're going to dig it. And, um, you know, we get a lot of people that come to our school. Sorry, my dog is playing. Um, a lot of people that come to our school, and they, they, they love the classes, right? And these are people that are actively looking for self-defense. And they come in. They love it. It's exactly what they wanted. They train forever. They, they dig it. They become badasses. It's awesome. But then they bring a friend in who isn't necessarily searching for self-defense. And then sometimes they don't love it. And my, my students are always like, why? I don't get it. Why wouldn't they love this? This is amazing. I've learned so much. I feel like I've, I can like, you know, protect myself and my family and all this stuff. And the case is usually because the people that they bring in that aren't actively looking for self-defense don't think it will actually help them in a violent situation. So they don't, they, they don't see what the point is. Like, why would I learn this stuff? It's not going to work. Like, if someone attacks me, I'm just not going to be able to do anything. I'm, just, I'm helpless. I'm screwed. Now, that's farthest from the truth, by the way. We have so many case studies of people that are at absolutely opposite odds that are successful. Now, um, one thing I really like is this painting. It's a quote. It's a, you, oh, man, that's backwards for you. Let me see if I can flip it around where it says, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Now, there's a picture of a gun, but <laughs> this is not about shooting. It also is about shooting, but it's not about shooting. The point is, is that if you don't even try, you are guaranteed going to fail. It's a guarantee, 100% guarantee. If you do try, at least now you have odds. Now, back to the story. So, here's the story. We have a girl, or I, I personally did not train her, but a co-school did. They have a girl that trained for a while, and she lives in a dorm at college. And so one night, she stayed home. All of her friends went out, and they actually went to go party and stuff, and she decided not to go. And so she stayed home. She went to sleep, and what she did not know is that she has a stalker, and a really creepy stalker. And here's what people don't understand. When a lot of times when there's an attack or a violent act or... Um, a robbery even. I've even been robbed myself and I actually have family members that have been robbed. The whole house was cleaned out. Um, these things are very premeditated and people actually plan this stuff out. They're not dumb. Like they're stupid because they're doing what they're doing, but they're not dumb people. They're not just going on a whim, just attacking someone for the sake of attacking somebody. They're, the dumb ones are in jail. These guys are the ones that are actually smart and they strategically plan this stuff out and they go when the opportunity is perfect and you never even know they're there. That's the person that we're worried about and that's the person she had watching her. So one night she went to sleep and this guy's been probably watching her for a long time and the, per the conditions were perfect for him. She was alone. He knows her habits. He's obviously created some sort of a deep obsession with her and the window was open. She's in a couple uh, stories up and she it was just prime and he just happened to be there. And so he climbed up the window and went into her room. She was asleep and then he got on top of her pretty quickly and she finally woke up and she was trapped. Now, First off, imagine just waking up and having some big person on top of you. That weight, did you see the, the silhouette, the outline, you don't even see who it really is. Um, just the fear and also just the um, amount of uncertainty of what's happening and shock. And you might not even be scared necessarily just because you don't even know what it is. And for all, it could be a bear. Um, also, take into account when someone's on top of your blanket, when you're, the blanket's on top of you, it, the blanket's trapping you in itself. You just created a prison. Like you're stuck like a cocoon. Like a cocoon. Um, he got on top of her, grabbed her arms, pinned them above her, and uh, she woke up super afraid. Super afraid. Now imagine she, all the things are going through her head. Like what probably felt like an hour or was probably about three seconds long. And she was talking about how she felt immense amount of fear. Like just trembling, shaking fear. Uh, she felt shocked, like, what the hell's happening? And how, why is this happening to me? She also had this weird sense of, like, this isn't real going on. Now, of course, this was all real. 
She started to freeze and panic. A lot of times when people panic, they just kind of freeze and they don't know what to do and they, they hope for the best and they think that nothing's gonna happen and someone's gonna save them and that usually isn't the case. Luckily, because she's trained before, she actually was able to do something. So she told herself, okay, well in training, I'm taught to strike and go for the most vulnerable parts of an attacker. That's like throw, eyes, nose, knocking someone out inside of the head, back of the head, breaking knees, uh, you know, crushing the groin, whether it's kicking your hands or whatever it is, biting. These are all very aggressive, vulnerable things to do. And when you hurt somebody like that, it short circuits their brain and they recalibrate and they don't really necessarily do the thing that they're currently doing because they get distracted by the immense amount of pain and their body does it naturally because it's so devastating. Anyway, sorry about that tangent. She decides to play. Right, so she she's frozen, right? And she remembers, she, her hands are above her head. She remembers that uh, she needs to strike and she doesn't have her legs available because a blanket is on her and she's tight and the guy's heavy on top of her. But she knows that he needs to take the blanket off and he needs to undress her if he wants to proceed with like a rape situation. And so she decides to wait. In a sec, and he can't do that while his arms are pinned. So she decides to wait until her, his arms let go to undress her or take the cover off. When he does that, she takes her hands, boom, and just strikes both thumbs right into the eyeballs and holds his head and squeezes as tight as she can. And she's just holding on as tight for, I mean, she's holding on for life right now. He freaks out, naturally, because his eyes are being crushed. And he tries to get off the bed, she doesn't let go. They roll off the bed. He lets go immediately, just goes and limp. She gets up, she books it, she runs out, she finds some help. Um, obviously probably screaming and panicking. When she gets back to the dorm room with the security and the people that are helping her, they actually found the guy dead on the ground. Now this isn't like a funny story and death is never a good thing, even if someone deserves it, like this guy probably did. But the thing is, is that she didn't even try to hurt him like that. Like she wanted to get away, but she wasn't trying to kill him. And I mean, not that she even was thinking about whether she should or not. She was just reacting the way she thought she should. But what happened was, as she fell, her eyes are here, and as she fell, her forearm crushed his trachea. So she landed with her weight on his trachea. It doesn't take a lot of weight. And he actually had a crushed trachea, which made him suffocate to death. I mean, she's a small little girl, big dude. He attacked her. She didn't apply, uh, basically she took strategy. The strategy was attack at the vulnerable points. They attacked, she attacked, she survived, and then accidentally killed the guy, which maybe needed to happen. Maybe if she didn't do that, he would have continued to fight her. But the, the point is that she was able to do something. And because she chose to act, whatever was going to happen to her didn't happen. And we don't know what's gonna happen. We, we, that could have been a rape situation. It could have been a rape and a murder situation. He could have just murdered her. Like we have no idea what was gonna happen, but it was obviously not gonna be a good thing. She defended herself accordingly and we applaud her for that. Unfortunately for this dude, he messed with the wrong chick. You know, he shouldn't have done that, obviously. I don't really have a lot of sympathy for him. The only thing I have sympathy for is that no one was able to help this guy because he obviously has something messed up in his head and he didn't have the support and the help he needed to not do this stupid thing. But that's the point. The point is, back to the recap, do something. Don't just think to yourself, oh, I'm small, I'm weak, I'm, I'm old, I'm fat, I'm lazy, I'm out of shape, so I won't be able to do anything anyways. That's not, that's not what we're all about. We're not a big CrossFit gym that's trying to ask someone that never, that's never done something before to come in. We're saying, hey, we gotta teach you strategies. And strategies involve stuff like what she did, and it worked. Okay, um, if you are curious about these classes, just go to crossclass.com, check it out. And um, besides that, guys, have a great rest of your day. Um, it's Friday here, and um, everybody's kind of not doing anything, so I think you should also not do anything. <laughs> All right, guys, take care. Have a wonderful rest of the day.